Welcome to Tea and Strumpets, a Regency Romance Review. I'm Zoe. And I'm Kelsey. And we're doing one of our rare night recordings. So Ooh, la la. <laughs> I know. Kelsey's got a glass of something that looks delicious. I'm uh, chugging my water. <laughs> it's okay. I've just had a long week. You know, I was like, I was like all ready to like get in pajamas and start chillaxing. And then I was like, ah, shoot, we have to record a <laughs> podcast. <laughs> We do. But luckily, our podcast is about something we love. And so we get to talk about a book together. Yes. And I don't mind talking to you, Zoe. Aw. Well, the feeling's mutual. So, <laughs> well, let's get into it. And the book that we are talking about today is A Bombshell by Sarah McLean. Woo! This is her first book in the Hell's Bells series. And that leads perfectly into my history fact for this week, which is about Hell's Bells, the um, expression. And I was like, what is the etymology of that idiom? So I wanted to find out. Well, tell me all about it, Zoe, because now I'm curious. <laughs> yeah, and it is it is not what I thought it would be. I assumed it was some biblical reference to the bells of hell, yeah, it's not. So the exclamation Hell's Bells has been used in both the UK and the USA since at least the mid-19th century. The earliest example of it in print that can be found is in the weekly London sporting newspaper, The Era, February 1840. The rather fanciful story concerned a character who had stolen his friend's partridges and replaced them with pigeons, claiming them to be ptarmigan, which is a word for any three or four species of partridge like grouse from cold regions. And anyhow, that was also a rabbit hole. I was like, what wow. is this weird word? It's P-T-A-R-M-I-G-I-N. It's not a word that we probably use anymore. But mm. anyhow, <laughs> the expression came into common use in the first half of the 20th century. And in 1932, the Australian soldier Joseph Maxwell used it in the title of the memoir of his experiences during World War I, Hell's Bells and Mademoiselles. Nice title. Yeah. <laughs> the expression is often extended by other evocative but meaningless additions. In the UK, this is often hell's bells and buckets of blood. And in the USA, hell's bells and little fishes or hell's bells and a bunch of parsley. <laughs> there are many other variants. In fact, almost anything can be added to hell's bells as there's no requirement for the addition to make sense. And something I found in my research is that some folks have theorized that Hell's Bells could refer to tinnitus, which is the condition of ringing in the ears, but there's really no firm evidence for that. However, many sufferers of tinnitus have taken to using that as a slang term for their condition today, hmm. with some support groups even sporting that name. Huh, so nice. Many people may know the expression Hell's Bells from our generation because of the ACDC song, um, Hell's Bells. And growing up in San Diego, we had a pitcher for the Padres. He was a closer. So that means that they would come in at the end if the team was ahead to try to confirm that that the team was going to win. They would they were just used for like right at the end um, if we were winning. And so we had a closer named Trevor Hoffman and his walkout music was Hell's Bells. And if you know the ACDC song, it just starts with these like clanging bells and it's like so huge. And I went to a lot of baseball games. My mom had season tickets as a kid. So like growing up, I went to so many baseball games and Trevor Hoffman would come out and it'd always be those bells clanging. So like I have this real like excitement association with Hell's Bells myself. Um, so I was really excited for this series. And then I wanted to know more about Hell's Bells. Awesome. I love that you have a memory associated with the Hell's Bells. <laughs> yeah. And like, obviously, Sarah McLean is spelling Bells, B-E-L-L-E-S, because mm -hmm. I think I think she is actually, I suppose I should double check that. Um, but uh Love it anyway, and there's a there's a real connection in this book to the to the series title. So yes, it is. And so today, as we move on to talk about our book, our main trope is secret identity. Yeah, I would say I couldn't really come up with another one. I'm sure there's more in there, but yeah, I felt pretty solid about secret identity. I think it was also. I think the other main trope is like the. I'm not meant to love this person because of the secrets of my past. <laughs> so I must put them at an arm's length. 
Yes, which I felt felt was summed up with secret identity, yeah. but I think you're absolutely spot on. <laughs> yes. And our main characters today are Lady Cecily Talbot and Caleb Calhoun, which finally Cecily's book happened. And oh my God, I, I wish I had reread the Talbot sisters books before reading this. I had a moment where I wished that too, but then I was also like, I didn't feel like I needed to do that when I read this book. I think that reading those books would enrich this experience, but it's not like you can't read this book and have no oh, idea what's going I on. I know, because it, it's not like I had to put it down and like immediately go catch up. It was more like they kept referring back to the Talbot sisters. And I was like, I remembered bits and pizzas, but I kind of had to like think about it for a minute. I was like, oh, if only I'd reread it recently. <laughs> mm hmm. So before we get into our synopsis, I have a little bit of a note. Um, I wrote the synopsis this time, and I think this is the I, – I think calling it a synopsis is actually a generous term because this is more of a teaser, I would say, because this book is so new and I just – well, I'm going to spoil, you know – something, which is that I really liked this book. And so I feel like also the kind of the crux of this book is like the bit of a mystery between them and the whys and the hows. And like finding that out, I found as a reader was like so fun. So I left most of that out in our synopsis and kind of I, like I said, I think this is more of a teaser. So listeners, I hope you still enjoy it. And we're going to get into all the spoilers in our discussion. I appreciate that, Zoe, because I think that this is a very new book. And so people have not had a lot of chance to pick it up yet. It might, mm -hmm. It's probably been added to a lot of TBR piles, but we can't guarantee mm -hmm. that a lot of people have read it. So I think that it's appropriate to keep it a little on the vague side. Well, thanks. I'm glad you approve because that's what we have. <laughs> so, shall we get into it? We shall. Lady Cecily Talbot is known for her reckless conduct, her disinterest for society's opinion about her, and for her jaw-dropping beauty. She enjoys the freedom that spinsterhood allows her, but isn't opposed to marriage if she could find a partner in crime. Ahem. Not crime, per se, but rather retribution. For Cecily is a member of Hell's Bells, a select group of women with special skills who provide support to the underprivileged and dole out retribution when warranted. They are led by the Duchess of Treviscan, and their current objective is to discover who is behind the raids on women-owned clubs throughout the city. Now, if you've read other Sarah McLean books, you will note that we have left off at the end of Daring and the Duke. Yes. Caleb Calhoun is an American businessman who is partners with Cecily's sister, Serafina, co-owning a bar. When Cecily met Caleb, she immediately fell for him, but she never could crack his hard exterior. Perhaps, the reader wonders, is it that he was the one man who wouldn't succumb to her charms? Or perhaps it was something else. But irregardless, our book begins on a reminisce about their last meeting, where it was decidedly clear that he did not want Cecily. Of course, this is not true, and Caleb has been doing his best to keep away from Cecily because he has a secret with a capital S. That means he can't get close to anyone, for if his enemies found out, they would surely use any weakness that they could exploit. However, fate continues to intervene and intertwine our hero and heroine. Serafina knows Cecily is up to something and begs Caleb to watch out for her reckless sister. Cecily is up to something, and through the course of her investigations, they continue to be thrown together and sparks fly. For example, quote, What makes you think I had anything to do with it? Because you're rich and beautiful, with the freedom that comes with both of those. You think I'm beautiful, she asks, as though everything was perfectly normal. I think you're fucking fearless, which makes you incredibly dangerous. She peered around him, watching as the unsuspecting Earl climbed the steps to return to the ballroom. Dangerous to whom, she asked casually, as though they were anywhere but here. To me, Caleb swallowed the response. To yourself. She cut him a quick look, then returned her attention to the Earl. Nonsense. I did exactly what any good girl should do when she gets herself into trouble. And what's that? She smiled. I found a proper hero to protect me. 
<laughs> the two share tremendous banter while Cecily shamelessly flirts and tempts Caleb throughout our story. She is a strong, independent spirit and doesn't need him to reply to keep the conversation or tension going, with moments like, quote, You can catch more flies with honey. Not that you've ever tried that with me. I've no intention of catching you, Cecily. Yes, yes, you've made that abundantly clear, she said, and for a heartbeat he thought he heard an edge in the words before she flashed him a bright smile. Though I can't imagine why not. I'm a lovely fly. And Caleb is the stoic silent type who's like a lit powder keg ready to explode with emotion. Quote, but what if she needed him? What if she had trouble breathing in the night? What if the men who'd attacked in Covet Garden found her here? What if they'd been followed? Caleb hadn't been in his right mind. He should have paid closer attention. He could have put her in danger. Again. So he returned, warm milk in hand, up the stairs, telling himself that he was acting with nobility, protecting the lady. Fucking gentlemanlike. <laughs> The two continue to meet while investigating the raids because the force behind them ends up being tied to Caleb's past. Their attraction finally proves too strong and Caleb gives in to Cecily's charms, but he cannot give himself fully for fear of that past catching up with him. But in the almost end, Cecily uncovers enough of his past that he has to admit pieces of it to keep her safe. Which lands him in jail, even though Cecily had asked Caleb to wait a bit and please let her take care of things. Men. But Caleb being incarcerated does not deter the Hell's Bells. They simply needed a touch more time to get things organized for saving the day. It certainly doesn't hurt to have an explosives expert on your team when you need a jailbreak. And in the end, a happily ever after is awaiting our hero and heroine. With business in America and London, there's adventure to be had. And Cecily is certainly one never to turn down the chance of excitement. Uh, that's a major teaser. <laughs> I know, it's such a teaser. Because it doesn't really say anything, but now we get to talk about everything. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> so shall we adjourn to the parlor? We shall. So today we wanted to once again mention the historical romance retreat, which is happening in San Diego in 2022. And that is going to run from September 28th to October 2nd. And there's the writer's track, which we've mentioned, and that's pre-retreat on the 26th and 27th. And then also, of course, there's the great book exhibition, which is open to the public. Um, so if you can't uh, get down to San Diego for the whole retreat and you can make it just for the day, there's a huge book signing with a lot of authors and all sorts of goodies. It's a ton of fun. And I wanted to mention that two years ago this week, I was at that great book fair and exhibition. Ah, oh, such a good time. I was not there, but go Zoe. <laughs> you were not. It's true. It was such a good time. That's where I first met Tessa Dare and I first met Kerrigan Byrne. And we hadn't yet started the podcast. We'd been talking about it. We maybe had recorded an episode. We had like some swag. I think I had some bookmarks. Like we'd come up with our logo, but mm -hmm. that's where we were at. We hadn't like fully done our podcast yet. So like what a difference in time. Oh yeah. Go us. <laughs> But I will say I had a blast just being at the book fair. I didn't get to go to the whole retreat. I'm hoping to get to go to the whole retreat this time. It's in my city. Like, ah. So regardless, I just really want to recommend that uh, the book fair, the signing is so fun. And if you'd like to order a ticket, attendance is limited. So you can learn more and register by visiting bit.ly slash HRR 2022 today. And you can also find us on social media at Instagram and Twitter at T is in Tom and is in Nancy Strumpets, Facebook slash T is in Tom and is in Nancy Strumpets, and on YouTube by searching our name. 
And if you're listening to us on YouTube, now is a great time to click that thumbs up and hit subscribe before you forget. Liking and commenting on our videos and subscribing to our channel is a really wonderful way to let us know that you like what we're doing. And we really do appreciate all those comments. Any comments that you guys leave us, um, we read them immediately pretty much Mm -hmm. because I have the app on my phone. And um, it's so great when you guys join the conversation. Welcome to Puffcast, your bi-weekly Harry Potter podcast, run by Puffs. I'm Melanie. And I'm Juliana. Do you like Harry Potter and Fantastic Beasts? Oh, yes. Oh, good. Are you looking for a fun, stress-free place to just have a good conversation, play some silly games, and hear from some great guests? Yes, please tell me more. Oh, boy. Well, then this podcast is for you. We would like to invite you to join our happy common room. Get comfy, have some pizza, make new friends, and be part of the conversation. All houses are welcome. You can find PuffCast every other Wednesday on all platforms where podcasts are found. So we'll see you in the common room. And until then, stay puffy. And badger on. Well, Kelsey... It was quite the tease. So now let's get into all of the details. <laughs> yes, let us do it. So what did you think about Bombshell? Um, I really liked it. I was really fascinated with the other girls in her little oh my quartet. Gosh. And I cannot wait to hear their stories because there was also like a moment with the spinster girl and she was all in a huff about this duke and it turns out he was actually being like good and not but she had like a vendetta against him yes and i'm just like i'm like okay where's that book that's a book let's see it and like the girl with the explosives who's who fascinates the detective with a uh, Scotland oh Yard. He's like really intrigued by this woman who's like sounds really spacey and then keeps like producing explosives from her purse. And I'm like, mm-hmm. and I'm like, yeah, I want that story too. So I will say, like, I did love Cecily and Caleb. You know, you got there's little tension in the Talbot sisters book. You know, you kind of got a glimpse of that. And Cecily never had a story. And I was like, where's Cecily's story? Because she was definitely a really fascinating side character within the six. The six within the sister's book. So I'm definitely Mm -hmm. super intrigued and I want to know all the things and I can't wait for the next book. So that's kind of where I sum up here. I am actually really glad you brought up all those points about the other people because I think that first books in series, they have like, they have a little bit more of a job to do, right? Mm -hmm. Because they have to set up the world and the characters and get you exactly interested in all the rest of it. Mm -hmm. And this book felt so complete. Like, and it did, in my opinion, such an awesome job of setting up the series without sacrificing the story. Because sometimes we, we say that, like that the first book of a series just isn't quite as strong as others. Like it feels like the others are, you know, kind of just being set up in the first book. Mm -hmm. Um, And this one, I think, set up that series so well, like so well. I'm the same. I'm like, I cannot wait for all those ladies books. And I'm, I think the Duchess is going to her her elusive husband who's on a different continent is going to come back. And I'm really, and I'm here for that. I love, I love a long lost husband situation where the wife's been doing her own thing. And then the husband comes back and he's like, we need to be married now. And she's like, get the hell away from me. <laughs> yeah, it's a great trip. So, but like every, every little thing in that book, I loved, but also I really loved Cecily and Caleb. Mm-hmm. It like at moments had, I don't know how to explain this, but it had, it was like very Sarah McLean in moments where it's like so super, super feminist and like super empowering. These are things I love. These are not things that I dislike. But then, and and then also like the, the writing again, fabulous, but there was just like her, her prose and kind of the way she does it. Cause she'll have these kind of like short sentences where she has like a 
like a ex- I don't know how to explain it. She has like this little punch of a point to mm-hmm. say, and she'll kind of have a lot of these short sentences. And sometimes I feel like that 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 can come off gimmicky a little bit mm. in in certain writing. But she hit that punch with so much power every time that she had me coming around. Like every time I was like, oh, "Yep, yeah, okay, I get it. I yeah. see where you're at. I'm with you. This is really good. I I like that. I mean, it felt to me like it just felt so polished, almost a little too polished in moments. Like, I don't know. I don't know how to to explain it, but I thought it was a fabulous book and I loved, I did love Cecily. I didn't think she was too much. No, I thought I she, didn't was think she was so too good. Much. And I thought she had good depth. I think another thing, just tracking back a little bit, mm-hmm. mentioning the world building for a first book. One thing that this book did that Sarah McLean has always acknowledged like her other books in mm-hmm. subsequent series, but I think this one was the first one that tied them all together. Like she mm-hmm. talks about the fallen angel, which is an older mm-hmm. one. Then it's mm-hmm. the Talbot sister. Cecily is a Talbot sister. And then it's talking about the bare knuckle bastard. The bare knuckle bastard. Exactly. And it talks about the bare knuckle bastard. So like it really does tie in. Like, she's building upon this world that she's created in so many different series that I think that's why it kind of came – it kind of came off so polished, I think, Mm -hmm. because Mm -hmm. it's just a continuation of the story she's been telling for, like, the last decade. It feels to me like not a continuation, but almost the culmination. Like, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like, she's she's finally gotten to this place that – I don't know if she set out to tell this, you know, to to bring it this – far full in the circle mm-hmm. but i think that once she realized that all of those puzzle pieces were cut were on the table she yeah. was like oh my gosh that is the story this is it mm-hmm. and i don't know i thought it was really really well executed something else i really liked about this is she has i, I felt that there was a bit of an evolution as an author where like i mean obviously like she's Again, she's fabulous. I, I I I don't like have anything, but I remember we read her first book, right? We yes. read the book uh, Nine Rules to Break. And mm-hmm. um I feel like, you know, as she's had more books under her belt and also just, you know, she's had more success, she's able to do more of what she wants to do, mm-hmm. you know, with her stories. And I'm really grateful for that. But The world that she painted in this book was significantly more diverse than I remember there being in really any of her other books. Yeah. Um, I guess, um, so the, the, the man who is a triple, the third partner in, um, in the, the bar with Caleb and, uh, Sarah, Mm -hmm. I can't remember his name, Fetu maybe? I can't remember where he, but he's, um, is he in the other books too? Uh, I mean, I don't know. He probably is. I don't. I mean, I think he's in like Serafina's book, but I don't yeah. recall him. He didn't play like a big role, at least. But he is Pacific Islander. Yeah. And um, uh, there was also the Duchess had um, an Indian man who was like her one of her right hand men. And there were just yeah. there were there were many people that were mentioned. Oh, the, the, the owner of the woman's bar, the black woman. Yeah. Um, and then and there, was there was another there was another Indian woman who was like becoming like the brewmaster of like mm-hmm. the ale that's being sought out because it's far better than anything else. Like they're you're and that's, right. That's history there. IPAs, guys. Yeah. <laughs> that's where they come from. <laughs> um so yeah, it just there was a lot peppered in there of just just painting London at this time, kind of in a more what I understand realistic light Mm -hmm. um and i'm excited to see that and i i just i just really like that and there were other things too wasn't just i'm it wasn't just the you know the things that we mentioned but and it felt really organic and natural and exciting and Mm -hmm. interesting and so that was really great to me because i just that's like the direction that i want to see everything going like i love my dukes Love them. Gonna Mm -hmm. keep reading about dukes, corsets, carriages, corsets and carriages. Like, I'm going to. But I would like a couple other stories peppered in there. But yeah, so I think overall, I think the book had a lot going for it. But also, again, 
Caleb's secret was a good secret. It wasn't what I thought. It wasn't what I thought either. Like, and I was trying to pick it apart and I'm like, okay, like what's going on? So yeah, I guess we can spoil it now. Like, yeah. so, which is just that, so Caleb, um, isn't who he says he is. He's not American. He's not He's even British. American, guys. <laughs> he know. has a British accent. He's been faking it the whole time. I know, right? And so he's um, – but he's hiding because he is um, suspected of murdering um, the Earl of something's heir. Yeah. Um, because um, – because. Because and, he um, went uh, – there's more well, because, to it than that. But it turns oh. out that there's another twist later oh, yeah. after he after he admits to the murder so that the Earl will come after him and not Cecily once the Earl figures out that it's him. Mm-hmm. Um, he didn't actually commit the murder. His sister killed the guy in self-defense. Um, so, like, it was just twist after twist. Yeah. And- oh, yeah. And he's got a sister, lives in London, hanging out, mm-hmm. like... Yep, who he hasn't seen in 18 years except from afar because yeah. he doesn't want anybody to think he's him. I don't think it's 18 him. years. I think it's like eight years. No. Is it 18 years? It, they, yeah, it was – It was. Oh, so it happened when they were like 17, 18, him and his sister or something yeah. like that. Um, and then he – got on a ship for America right after that and was gone for a long time. And so, I, yeah, I mean, I think it was uh, – wait, no, you're right. The sun is – I'm wrong. I'm wrong because the son is the the Earl's the the progeny from the rape is um only eight or nine. So you're right. It couldn't be that long. Yeah. Okay. So I okay. Well that was fun to talk about. I'm sure that was fun to listen yeah, to. Yeah, exactly. Us <laughs> figuring out what the heck happened in the book we read. <laughs> well, let's let's talk more about Caleb because I really liked him. <laughs> I did too. And, you know, he was really good at standing his ground. And it was really good because it wasn't like he – I mean, he did the manly thing of, like, I'm going to kiss her just to get her to shut up or get her out of my system, you know? And then he's like, that backfired. <laughs> but he, like, immediately knew. And it wasn't yeah. like he – after that, he was just like, I'm fucked. I'm fucked. I can't. But it was so great how, how like, he was so stoic – with her and like so like she would just ooze flirt and charm yeah. and he would just be like he wouldn't ever be mean to her though he was mm-hmm. never he was just like stoic and so i think that's why she was like she kind of kept going because he she just wanted to see if she could crack him and she did finally yeah. no and that's the whole thing is like she wasn't pushing on him in a like why don't you love me way it was more just like a I just need to get a reaction from him like Mm -hmm. I'm not even getting a dislike reaction from him I'm getting like a nothing reaction from him but he had some really great lines and some really like he had a lot of dimension in his character and it wasn't just this stoic guy you know he wanted to help her but she pretty much was like you know he wanted to play the hero yeah um but she was like, I don't need a fucking hero. Like, I came to this fight armed. I know what I'm doing. Yeah. Like, I can defend myself. Um, and I didn't come in here recklessly. And he actually is the first person that really sees her as not reckless. Mm-hmm. He notices – I can't remember the line, but it's something that, like, you know, you're not reckless. You're um, – I can't remember what he says. Tactical. I, I wish like there, yeah, there's something, but it, it's it's beautiful. And yeah, you're like, it's, yes, it's she's beautiful. Yeah. she's she's smart about what she's doing. Yes, she's doing behavior that like a woman doesn't normally do, but she's making informed choices. Mm-hmm. It's not just reckless behavior. Yeah. Um so, and she's going in know, with he, a plan and pulling herself back when she needs to. She's not like she doesn't get swept up in the moment and then carry it too far. Like, she's very exacting with how she does it. And he recognizes that and just, like, you know, wants to help her in the sense that, like, he wants to give her the outs so she doesn't have to quite take on so much herself. But he well, also he, recognizes... He cares about her. Yeah. But if she also... he He also recognizes the value in what she's doing, in a sense, like... Yes, mm-hmm. does he think it's dangerous? And yes, does he think she needs to be doing it? Like, and no, he doesn't think she needs to be doing it. But he recognizes that there is purpose behind her actions and it's guided by moral. It's it's 
directed by her own morals and that of her friends, but it's also done in a way that they can do it. They're not people who can, you know, do a duel. They're not women who can call out a guy for his hypocrisy. They're women who have a ways of getting things across because they know the they know the true power of things like gossip and turning mm-hmm. the public opinion against someone. And that's mm-hmm. really what's going to hurt these people. It's not anything they do as far as getting them thrown in jail or something like that, which of course they'd love to do, but it's also just turning the tide against them and making the public feel okay and condemning them for their behavior. Yeah. And I think, I think the more that we see these women in these books, we're going to see like even more, you know, diabolical plots. Mm -hmm. I'm very excited for, for all of their um, mischief is not the right word because they are like, they're being ruthless, not reckless, you know? Mm -hmm. Um, And so I, yeah, but I, I think that Caleb, Caleb was a great hero. I, I, and he was like a cinnamon roll at the end. He was so bushy gushy and like is. so sweet. And uh, I loved him. So anyhow, are you ready to give him a rating? Yes. What would you give him? I'm going to give him a nine. I think we're going to be on par today. I'm also a nine. Yeah. <laughs> He's wonderful. He's wonderful. He just somehow isn't quite perfect for me, which is like, that's where, where I get a 10. But like, I don't know that there could have been anything else better for him for me. Um, oh, no. But it remember, just, just tens, are, tens are heroes and heroines that spark that extra secret place in our soul. You yeah, know, and I, that's absolutely. a totally subjective, subjective <laughs> opinion. So a nine is like phenomenal. They're on the yeah. page. Highly recommend. We don't find fault with them. They just mm-hmm. didn't touch that extra secret part of us. There, there's yeah. not the terroir, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> as it were. <laughs> oh, that's a perfect description. <laughs> All right, we haven't even talked about Cecily, so we have to talk about Cecily. I think Cecily, we've talked a lot about Cecily, just not, but in different yes. ways. <laughs> Cecily, like, spoke to all of my feminist, well, you know, heart. Yeah. I really loved her, and she was so unexpected. Like, the little quote that I shared in the beginning about the, like, I'm a lovely fly, you know? Mm-hmm. Instead of of being hot-headed, she was so calculated. And mm-hmm. I just, I loved that. She was... She was great. I mean, she wasn't what I expected. I don't know what I expected, but like every turn as I'm reading the book, her dialogue would be so much better than mm-hmm. the response that I thought it was going to be. And so I just uh, I just loved her. No, and I think she was I think she was dynamic. It wasn't like she like you said, we said earlier, she didn't get too much. She didn't like she towed that line between I can be bratty uh-huh. or I can be like strong. Mhm. But I can also like admit faults or add like mm-hmm. or get tender when I need to, you know, and that's some of the things is sometimes you get those strong heroines that, you know, there's I don't want to say they're too they're not too self-righteous, but they're just overly. Does that make sense? To where they just where yeah. they're preachy, like she never got preachy. Yeah, she never got. She never ignored Caleb or Caleb's feelings or that relationship between the two of them because of some misguided, self-righteous opinion that she had. Mm-hmm. Which, you know, it's she never, I'll say it, she never got to the point where she got in her own way. Which I think is where we really, those strong heroines toe that line is where they start getting in their own way. And you're mm-hmm. like, why are you getting in your own way? Yeah, no, she... She didn't. She just was like, I don't know. She just, she had a plan and she fucking executed yeah. it. Like, and and <laughs> I love a, I love a lady with a plan. Yeah. And, but the coming together of Caleb and Cecily wasn't one lost a part of themselves. It was Mm-mm. literally the meshing of a team. Like they became a teamwork and they never had to have that imbalance. Will they, won't they? What are you going to do? What am I going to do? I need to be the man. 
I need to be protected. How dare you want to protect me? They never went through that battle. They just immediately kind of like fit together like puzzle pieces and balanced each other out, as well as being able to share like fairly open and open and honest conversations, like which is very hard to do when you're sharing a secret identity. Mm-hmm. But like as soon as it became relevant, Caleb shared the information with her. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, it was – I mean, it was just – it was a great pairing. And I feel mm-hmm. like they both were like when, – when it came down to them being together at the end, they were 100% in for whatever the other person – like whatever compromises that they needed to make. And this is also a no baby happily ever after. Oh, yeah. Cecily actively does not want children. She loves being an aunt. She loves all 10 of her nieces and nephews and is like, they're great none for me thanks yeah and caleb's like that's fine you know like cool yeah uh, i just want you yeah <laughs> you know i don't even think it ever goes there there's not even that conversation no like she he's just, just like she just yep. actively he asks her he's like do you want kids and she's like not really <laughs> i've got a lot of nieces and nephews and i love them but that's plenty <laughs> yeah so anyhow I, I i liked all that um i'm ready to rate cecily all right what are you gonna rate her Cecily is also a nine for me for the same reasons. I love her. She's fabulous. She pulled at my heartstrings at moments, but yet there was still just the missing that terror, as you say. Um, She was so great. So great. I'm going to remember her. Yeah, I agree. I agree wholeheartedly. I think it's really great, too, because I was really interested in Cecily while reading the Talbot Sisters books and was disappointed when we didn't get her book. So I'm very happy that she got the book and she did not disappoint in her book. Yeah. So what would you rate her? A nine. I thought we would be on the same page and so far we have been. Excellent. All right. So I have a couple of favorite quotes and they're long. Okay. But it's because I didn't share them in the synopsis because they were very spoilery. And so my quotes are long, but one of them is like literally – how the book got its name. And I didn't want to, I just, it's so good. If you've read this book, like you have to, you have, anyhow, because (laughs) like one of the, one of the Hell's Bells is an explosion, explosives expert. So why wouldn't her book be called Bombshell? Well, for many reasons, but anyhow, Mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. this is when Cecily and Caleb are reunited and he's in jail and she's like, you can't die. You can't be in jail like I need you. Okay. So Mm -hmm. she says, has it occurred to you that I am a great deal of trouble? She added only every day since the day we met. And do you think I will be less trouble once you are gone? Because I shan't be, I assure you, I will not take your death. Well, I've no intention of withering gracefully in silent despair, like some widow wearing black and reading sad poetry. Widow. He lingered on the word. On the way, it made it sound like they'd had a lifetime together. On the way, it made him ache. But Cecily was just beginning. Let me be clear, you arrogant man. You know nothing of what I will do if you die. If you die, I will detonate. They will have to invent new words for the havoc I will wreak. Her blue eyes flashed, full of furious promise. Good Lord, she was magnificent. So you are not allowed to die on some silly hill and claim it was for me, Caleb Calhoun. I don't want it, and I certainly don't need it. When I read that line, I will detonate. I was just yeah. like, oh, everything. It's like it comes together. And I loved it. I just, oh, and I loved that whole rant. Like, you can't die because I will fucking explode if you're dead. Um, and it won't be good for anybody who's near me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, okay. So I am going to admit, I was really bad at highlighting because I just was really into the story (laughs) and I wasn't reading the synopsis so I didn't highlight like anything until the end (laughs) good um but that's okay because that means you loved the book (laughs) yes so I've got a couple good ones and Mm -hmm. this is I think what you meant about like Sarah McLean's little like punchy, almost gimmicky lines mm-hmm. that they're still great in context. So, great. <laughs> so I'm gonna give you two of them. Happened one right after the other. This is towards the end, jailbreak, fun things. So <clears throat> it was Colford. Imogene scowled. Did you do him in? No, 
He's currently under arrest, Cecily said. Turns out they don't like it when you nearly kill two people in Scotland Yard. Explosions are fine, though, Caleb said dryly. Explosions have style, Imogene replied. <laughs> I love her. And then her. the last one is, um, again, jailbreak. Duchess coming to save the way. Ahem. <clears throat> But it is lovely to see a plan come together nonetheless, the Duchess announced. Into the carriages, everyone. Mr. Calhoun continues to bleed. (laughs) I love it. All right. I have one more. It's a little long, but it's their declarations of love, and it's very good. And anyhow, I love you. The words were out before she could stop them, before she could predict that he would go stiff beneath her, that his touch would stutter over her skin. She closed her eyes, her throat full, her eyes suddenly hot with tears. I'm sorry, she whispered. I know that you don't want it. I know it's not why you're here, but I love you and I cannot keep quiet any longer. She kept her head on his chest, refusing to look at him, not wanting to see the rejection in his eyes, knowing she couldn't bear it and still knowing she couldn't bear the other, the not ever having said it. I cannot hold it in any longer. I don't wish to wait to love you, to tell you. And once she began to speak, it was suddenly impossible to stop. So she spoke to her hand, playing at the soft hair on his chest, even as she felt that she was stealing the touch, what might be the last. You said you can't stay away from me, and I hate how I love that, even as I hate that you wish to stay away from me. He caught her hand in his then, tight and firm, holding her still. Cecily. Her name rumbled in his chest, and she ached at the feel of it, wishing she could commit it to the ordinary, that it was just the way Caleb said her name at night, when they were together. But she could not take it for granted. She held her breath, desperate for him to say more, and then he did. No one has ever loved me out loud. It couldn't be true. This magnificent noble man who had spent a lifetime fiercely standing with the people he loved, he deserved a company of people who loved him back, a battalion of them. She lifted her head. How could she not? Met his beautiful gaze and saw the truth in it. Let me do it. Let me love you. Please. Ugh. I just, no one has ever loved me out loud. Oh, Are I love you it. you kidding oh. me? <laughs> oh, okay. So. But this is what I mean about the, like, the brutal honesty, even with the secret identity, the identity, you know, she can admit she loves him. He doesn't immediately respond to it back, but he says thank you, you know, like in Mm -hmm. that sense. Like he appreciates that she said it. He doesn't pull away and get all sulky pants and like do all that nonsense romance heroes do when the mission of love is said when they didn't want it, you know. Instead, he's like, no one has ever like said that to me before. Yeah. And he's just like, oh, (laughs) And I think he says it back soon after, like it, oh, or yeah. no, within it's not this like, scene. But yeah, but it he he absorbs it first, and mm-hmm. he like he feels his fucking feelings. It's great. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So steaminess rating and encounter counter. There were three encounters. Mm-hmm. This book was a powder keg ready to explode. <laughs> yeah. No, there was a lot of great tension, and like, and the kisses Learning. just made you want the more, and you're just uh. like. Come on, come on, come on. Yeah. So, yeah, this one was like super hot tea, almost burned my mouth on it, but but still sippable. Absolutely. Okay. So, I have never hated our next segment more than <laughs> for this book because it's our feminist recap. That's what we call it. We need to figure out a new name. We need to rework it because to me, it was like when I thought about this book, obviously, this book is like, flaming supporter like yeah this book is feminism in a book like but I was like thinking to myself like what what empowered me in this book you know like what moments empowered me why did I walk away from this book feeling empowered I did right like I felt and so that was like that's I think that would be way more interesting to talk about you know Mm -hmm. I think we've done that and I think that the quotes that we've shared I've shared from Cecily like you have that I'm going to detonate. But then you also have her saying, let me love you. And so you get this really wholesome, like whole person, rounded person that's like Mm -hmm. strong and tender. And that's the same with Caleb. So anyhow, I don't know. Well, what what are we going to do? Say that this book is feminist? Like, duh. (laughs) 
Yeah, well, duh. But I think, again, like moments that empower you, moments that I love that to me truly speak to feminism is in the sense of Cecily admitting to her friends that she is really interested in Caleb Calhoun Mm -hmm. and doesn't think he wants her, you know, like, but he's going to leave. And like the Duchess is like, I'll cut a bitch. (laughs) <laughs> like, do you need us to step in? We'll cut a bitch, you know? <laughs> and I just love that because, again, it's like the women not saying, oh, you don't need a man. Like, you're so much better without him. Like, and these are women who are fully, like, supported her and her choice of spinsterhood. Like, they're not saying, oh, yay, you finally found a man. Like, they don't care. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? Like, that's not their agenda. But when she's like admits to having feeling for this man, they're like, how can we help? Like, what do you need us to do to make this happen for you? You know, Mm -hmm. it's not like them feeling betrayed because she's leaving the sisterhood. Yeah, there's just like so many like when you see those friends like supporting each other, it was was just like that felt wonderful. And then also like I wanted to mention that like the Duchess, when she has the servants ball, she has a ball for all of the servants. I love that. And there was a bowl with just like money in it. And the idea is that if anybody was needed money because money is power, they can take what they need. Like, and it's to, and there's an author's note in the back of the book um, that kind of speaks to that, which was really lovely um, as for like where she got that inspiration. But like, I just, I just loved that that's like, that's how these people want to go through the world, like helping others and helping the little people. And and yeah. not only do they want to do it, but they execute it. Like they show how it can be done, how mm-hmm. people who are perceived to have no power can actually affect great change, you know? And maybe the change doesn't look like what it would if it were a person who had, you know, that's power status, but yeah. the change that they make is just as good. So mm-hmm. I don't know. I just, I felt like ready to take on the world at the end of reading this book and like really happy and really satisfied. And so like that is what I want people to come away from reading these books feeling like. Absolutely. Okay. Final book review. What do we think of the book, Zoe? I think this is a really great book. I am going to give it a 9.5. It's so close Oh my God, to I was literally just <laughs> thinking the same thing. I was like, it's so close to perfection. It really is good. And I mean, it has adventure. It has steaminess. It has wonderful heroes and heroines. It also has amazing sidekicks. And mm-hmm. I want to I read the next books. Like I need them now. Not now. next year and the year nope. after and the year after that. I need them like right now. Uh huh. I do. I, I agree. Um, I can't wait for everything, and I'm probably gonna read. This I didn't one again. even have a teaser at the end of the book. I'm like, come on, Sarah, give me at least a teaser of the next book. Oh, I can't wait. I I'm so excited for these books because they... I don't even think it's been announced. I don't even know which one. I don't know if it's the Duchess. I don't know if it's the Imogen. I don't know if it's Amelia. <sighs> I think it I think it did say whose book it was gonna be. I think it was no I think it was not Imogen. It was the it was the um the other girl was it Amelia? Was that her name? The I quiet, think her name the, is Amelia. The, um, yeah. Anyhow, the wallflower. But yeah. regardless, okay. things can change. <laughs> Who knows what it'll be? Um I can't wait. I can't wait. Yeah. I can't wait. Yeah. So anyhow, we don't get to read that next time. What no. are we reading next time? Next time, we are headed back to Maiden Lane with Notorious Pleasures. Number two by Elizabeth Hoyt. I am looking forward to moving to you getting to read some more Maiden Lane that is not the Maiden Lane you dislike and the yes, Maiden Lane that I'm I dislike. I'm happy <laughs> to get on to the next one. I'm very sad it's not the third one, which is the one I'm looking forward to most. Mm-hmm. But that's Okay. Number two is one step closer. (laughs) It is. So thank you all, everyone, for listening. We so appreciate your support. And if you have a moment to rate, review, and subscribe, if you haven't already subscribed, click that subscribe button on whatever podcatcher you use because that then you'll get all of our episodes as soon as they drop. And we really appreciate all your support. 
So thanks again for listening and join us next time as we read Notorious Pleasures by Elizabeth Hoyt. And may all your ever afters end happily. Happily.